Welcome back to another Magical Voxel tutorial. This one's going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to be collabing with Mango Voxel to share with you guys 10 tools in Magical Voxel you probably haven't heard of. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to cover is the sparse feature. So you can see right here, I have a pretty large scene that takes up most of the actual working space in Magical Voxel. However, if you go to render, you can see it only renders a very small portion of what my actual uh, scene has. So to fix that is you go to render and then under sample in this three bars, you would check on sparse. So after about 10 or so seconds, at least for me, with sparse turned on, now I can actually see my entire render. The next thing I want to cover is um, the hole feature which stands for, well, at least I like to call it hollow. Um, let's say you want to put a light source. You want to make this cube glass and put a light source in the middle and kind of make it like a lamp. So you go over to the edit section and under modify, you click on hull. And once you do that, the selected object will be hollow. Everything will be hollow. So if I was to erase a little bit you can see that the inside is completely hollow now so now if i go over to render and make this glass you can see the inside is hollow compared to for instance if i was to it was not hollow so this is very useful for not only doing stuff like this, but if you were making a house and you wanted to make little windows like so, you can quickly do something like that. Next, we are going to cover a very important feature in Magical Voxel, which is layers. So for instance, let's say you finished everything except for adding in lighting. Like you wanted to add some lights right here. Having all this vegetation and rendering it with your whole scene can be nice, but having it on all the time can really decrease on your work efficiency because it takes a lot longer to render all this vegetation and uh, how the light has to react to it. So you would put stuff on layers. Let's just quickly cover how layers work. This scene is put all on layer zero. Uh, I'm going to put this actual uh, the walls and the floor on a separate layer all you have to do is first go from your object view to your world view which you would know based on um, seeing this kind of like coordinate system that selected the object what you do is just select the object you want to put on a separate layer and I'm gonna put this walls and floors on layer one like so just click on this um, area right here along the color. And now if I deselect this object, you can see um, uh, the walls and the floor are put on layer one and you can hide it or unhide it depending on what you are working on. So you can unhide it now. And I'm gonna put all this office, office material on layer two. So staying in the world view, just left click and drag your mouse over the objects you want to put on the layer and then just click right here and now all these are put on layer 2. Deviating off layers is a tool called display background objects. This is turned on by default but I'm going to show you what you do if you uh, turn it off. So let's say for instance you wanted to work on this table right here and you wanted to I don't know decorate it some more you can it's kind of hard to decorate it right now because it's cluttered around these cabinets and then this uh, office space so what you do is you turn this off and now everything that isn't this object that's selected will be turned off so that you can easily uh, do your edits to whatever you're working on and obviously, if you don't want that um, on anymore, you can just 
turn it back on and then all your objects that isn't the selected object come back when you're editing the selected object lastly there is a quick way to duplicate objects which involve using the world view so right now i'm in an object view to enter world view you can either press this arrow right here or tab and what you do is you literally just hold down shift and left click drag any of these arrows or these uh, angled lines and while holding down uh, left shift and left clicking and dragging out this blue eye line i can easily duplicate whatever object that is selected which is very useful and saves you a lot of unnecessary steps so now with my five tools done i'm going to go ahead and shift the attention over to mango voxel who's going to explain to you guys the other five tools the multi-select tool is very helpful upon selecting multiple colors in your palette right clicking on them reveals a pop-up menu with a couple of options i'll be focusing on the rand function the random function works like this. It totals up the selected voxels, then divides that amount by the number of colors in your palette that you have selected and disperses the covers evenly. If the number of selected voxels is 300, and you have 6 colors selected in your palette, that would mean that each color is, will be randomly assigned to 50 of those 300 voxels. You can use the random function for a lot of different things, some of which are making grass, adding simple textures to models, and even making foliage or simple bushes. I might make a separate video about texturing if you guys are interested, let me know down below. The object hierarchy is a menu that does a number of things, and can be found in the top left section of your UI. If you have multiple objects within your scene, the list will appear longer. It should look something like this. Let's talk about how the hierarchy works and what the buttons do. The first thing is the colored rectangle on the side of each row. This box represents what layer the object is on, so the color of the rectangle correlates to the color of each layer. For instance, layer 0 is tan. The object in the first row is also tan. This indicates that the first object is in layer 0. This next part of the video is going to be pretty rapid fire because all of the buttons have a pretty simple explanation, but feel free to rewind and go back if you didn't understand what I said. These buttons are in charge of adding slash removing objects from the scene. These buttons group and ungroup objects. These buttons move the selected objects higher up or lower down in the hierarchy. So if two objects are intersecting, whichever object is higher up in the hierarchy will appear in the render. For example, if one object was a third from the top, and another object was a fifth from the top, the object that is a fifth from the top will appear in the render. These buttons will bring you in and out of an object or group. So if you're in world view and you have an object selected, once you press enter object, you will be put into model view, allowing you to edit the object. Using keybinds to switch tools in Magical Voxel is very easy to do and significantly impacts the speed at which you can make things. I'll provide a full list of Magical Voxel keybinds down below. However, I will show some basic ones right now. The position tool can be found on the right hand side of your UI in the world view. The position tool allows for the user to type in accurate values for the object's position in the world. This tool is especially helpful for centering an object at world origin. The erosion tool will remove one layer of voxels from the ones you have selected. For example, it would shrink a cube that is 40 voxels cubed to 38 voxels cubed. The dilation tool is the exact but opposite to the erosion tool. Instead of removing one layer of voxels, it adds an additional layer to the ones you have selected. For example, it would enlarge a cube that is 40 voxels cubed to 42 voxels cubed. Thank you so much for watching our video and thank you to Art Cheney for letting me collaborate with him. If you made it this far, please leave a like and don't forget to comment what other tutorials you would like to see. As always, thank you so much and have a great day.